Duly Noted, a health and care podcast is the official podcast series of Duly Health and Care. Each podcast features physicians or team members discussing groundbreaking topics and innovations that help listeners reimagine and better understand an extraordinary health and care experience. One in eight men in the United States will be diagnosed with it. So we're discussing prostate cancer treatment options. Our guest, Dr. Amit Patel, a urologist and chairman of urology at Dewey Health and Care. This is Duly Noted, a health and care podcast. Thanks for listening. I'm Joey Waller. Hi there, Dr. Patel. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Joey. So first, we'll discuss further details in a moment, but to begin with, for those diagnosed with prostate cancer, what are the basic treatment options available, and is there anything new happening? For most men with prostate cancer in the U.S., the two standard treatments are radical treatments, which include surgery, which is complete removal of the prostate and sometimes removal of the lymph nodes. And the other treatment option is radiation therapy. And usually this is to the whole prostate and sometimes the surrounding areas of the pelvis as well. Some of the newer things that are happening in the prostate cancer world today are the emergence of focal therapy. And this is very similar to a lumpectomy for breast cancer. So we are now, with better imaging and better diagnostics, better biopsy techniques, we're able to select certain patients for focal therapy where we're just treating the area of the prostate that has the cancer and really sparing the surrounding areas and the the rest of the prostate. And this is really an appealing treatment option for select patients because it mitigates the side effects that you get with radical therapy. So speaking of those options, which of those is best for what type of patient depending upon their basic circumstances? So it really depends on their cancer location and their cancer type. So if we have a patient that has an aggressive cancer, they may benefit from radical treatment options, including surgery or radiation. Now, when you're looking at ideal candidates, if you're a younger patient, you want to have options on the table in the future in case this aggressive cancer comes back after treatment. And so in general, younger patients that may have aggressive cancers lean more towards surgery as their treatment option because they can always have radiation in the future to salvage any cancer recurrences. A lot of times the elderly population will decide to choose radiation if they have aggressive cancers or need whole gland treatment because it is easier to go through. Surgery may not be an ideal situation for them depending on their other medical conditions and it's a walk-in walk-out type of treatment for them so it makes it easier for patients to get to their treatments. Gotcha. So How do those treatment options vary in terms of both effectiveness and side effects? Between surgery and radiation, they are generally effective for treating prostate cancer almost at equal rates, and it depends on the type of cancer you have. But the side effect profiles are very different. For surgery, the three main side effects that I talk to patients about, which are functional side effects, are the loss of the ability to ejaculate. The second side effect is urinary incontinence. And this is leakage of urine when you cough, sneeze, laugh, strain, sometimes go from sitting to standing. So these patients would have to wear pads or diapers, and there's to a variable degree, they recover completely, but not all patients do. And then the third side effect is erectile dysfunction. And again, it occurs to a variable degree depending on the patient's baseline status, but in general, most patients are going to experience some degree of erectile dysfunction after surgery. For radiation, The side effect profiles are a little bit different. The way radiation works, it's not zapping the prostate dead. It's creating changes in the DNA of the tissue, and this is how it kills the cancer cells. But there are some side effects to the surrounding tissues, 
when you radiate. And although radiation has gotten very precise, there are effects on the neurovascular bundle as far as the vascular system. And so you can still get erectile dysfunction to a varying degree, but it occurs a little bit later after the radiation is complete. It can also affect the bladder tissues because the bladder is adjacent and connected to the prostate and patients can experience some urinary symptoms such as urinary frequency, urgency. Later on they may develop blood in the urine through a mechanism called radiation cystitis and then they can also develop rectal symptoms so rectal urgency, frequency as well as radiation proctitis. Now we can mitigate some of these side effects by doing uh, certain procedures before they receive the radiation, uh, having a full bladder. We can put a little space gel between the prostate and the rectum to decrease the radiation dose to the rectum. However, that's generally the two main differences between surgery side effects and radiation side effects. And so when things like you mentioned there, incontinence, sexual function, when those things are at stake, How important would you say it is for patients to consider those side effects before choosing which treatment might be best? Yeah, Joey, that's a really important consideration for patients. And these are the things that they discuss with their doctors firsthand. And these are the main side effects that we talk about. But patient preferences are certainly considered. Their expectations are important. What they're really looking for, some patients may say, I want the prostate cancer out of my body, and I'm willing to deal with these side effects. Others are looking for quality of life aspects being a priority and managing the cancer in other ways. And so I think having a really thorough discussion with our patients, understanding what their needs are and what their priorities are, is equally as important to discussing their prostate cancer and prognosis with them. Yeah, so certainly a lot of things to balance when coming up with a treatment plan. So besides those side effects, doctor, what other considerations should patients keep in mind when evaluating those options we're talking about? So I think with the radical treatments, depending on the cancer type, looking at potential salvage therapies is important. So uh, I mentioned earlier that if you have a younger patient that has an aggressive cancer, you want to consider what are my next treatment options if I need them. Unfortunately, none of these treatment options can offer a 100% cure rate to everybody. And so we want to keep contingencies in mind. And again, for surgery patients, you always have the option of receiving radiation therapy afterwards to salvage a recurrence. With radiation therapy, surgery becomes a little bit more difficult. It's not an easy procedure to go through and the side effects are amplified after radiation because there is scar tissue and changes in the tissue and changes in healing that occurs with radiated tissue. And so I think when we're going through these options with patients, we also want to consider what would be the next steps if needed. And so having said all that, when might patients consider combining those different treatment modalities? In general, it depends on the cancer type and the cancer stage. So a couple of things just to define it. Cancer grading really tells us how aggressive a cancer is. So when you talk about cancer, you talk about grading and staging. So grading is how aggressive is the cancer? How aggressive are these cells? How likely are they to be able to get out of the organ and escape through either lymphatic channels, blood vessels, which is vascular invasion, or through nerve sheaths or nerve channels. And then staging is where is the cancer in my body? Is it confined to the prostate, which is stage one or stage two? Is it extending outside the prostate, which is stage three? Or is it metastatic? Are there lymph nodes involved? And a lot of times these two things are very important in helping us decide what steps we're going to take to treat the patient. Are they going to have surgery and remove lymph nodes that may be positive or do an extensive dissection if the cancer looks like it's outside of the prostate on imaging and then prepare these patients for the next step, which is a combination of radiation therapy afterwards. And that would be in either an adjuvant radiation setting, which is right after surgery, or we can wait a bit 
to see if the cancer comes back and then treat them in the salvage setting. In radiation therapy with aggressive cancers, if they're not a good surgical candidate, we tend to pair a different modality of treatment with the radiation, and this is known as androgen deprivation therapy. And that is where we lower the patient's testosterone levels almost to what we call castrate levels, and so essentially zero. And this is, in addition to the radiation, this helps treat the prostate cancer. As prostate cancer and the prostate is dependent on testosterone for growth, suppressing that testosterone helps treat the prostate cancer more effectively. Interesting. So, a couple of other things. One being, as you well know, some other areas of medicine, some other diseases and their treatments are much more cut and dry than some of the things we're discussing here, right? So when you're dealing with all these different variables and things that have to be tailored specifically to each patient in a very individual way, what would you say the approach is of you and yours at Dooley Health and Care and managing all this and coming to the best decision for the treatment choice along, of course, with the patient? I really like the way you phrase that question because you really do sum up the importance of what we consider at Dooley in our multidisciplinary prostate cancer clinics. So, for example, in our offices here, if a patient gets diagnosed with prostate cancer, they are contacted by the doctor and then also by a nurse navigator who then helps set up a multidisciplinary cancer appointment for the patient. And at this appointment, they see the surgeon or the doctor who did the biopsy. So they see a urologic oncologist. And then they also see a dietitian. They'll meet with the nurse navigator. And then they meet with the radiation oncologist as well and their team. And so in one visit, our patients are getting the information they need first and foremost about their prostate cancer grading and staging, and then about their treatment options and surgical treatment options, as well as radiation treatment options, and then also lifestyle changes that they can make through diet and exercise and what they can expect. So I think that's first and foremost one of the things that we have here at Dooley that I think is a fantastic resource for patients with the whole team approach for prostate cancer. One of the things that we're doing that's slightly more innovative is focal therapy. So we are treating patients that have focal prostate cancer with novel therapies such as ablation. We offer two types of ablation in our cancer clinic. We offer cryoablation, which is freezing the portion of the prostate that is cancerous. And we offer a newer therapy called irreversible electroporation. And this is using electrical currents that are not thermal, so they don't heat up the prostate, they don't cook the prostate, but the electrical currents kill the prostate cancer cells. And these are therapies, again, that are used to kill prostate cancer, but mitigate the side effects of radical therapy. So for each of our patients, when they come in, we're looking at their imaging, which is typically an MRI of the prostate, their biopsy results, there's other staging imaging that they may have, including PET scans. And then we can work with the patient and work with our team to help decide what an, an ideal treatment option is for that patient based on their needs and expectations and priorities, as well as the cancer. And finally, doctor, in summary here, I know this is a very general question, but if you could, once treated, what results and success rate can patients usually expect? So in general, most patients with prostate cancer have localized disease and very high cure rates. And that is very fortunate. You started the podcast with one in eight men have prostate cancer, and that's very true. But there are a certain sub-segment of men where the cancer can come back. And in general, with any type of radical therapy, when patients need radical therapy, there can be a 15 to 20% recurrence rate where the cancer does come back. And a majority of those patients can be salvaged with other therapies. But there's still about 30... 4,000, 35,000 patients a year that die from prostate cancer. So of the 
280,000 new cases that occur, about 34,000 patients are dying every year. So, you know, there are still men that have aggressive prostate cancer that need treatments afterwards, and that, that a certain percentage, about 15 to 20 percent, have metastatic disease on presentation. So early screening, early detection is important. And then on the other side, we're trying to reduce side effects, mitigate side effects by selecting patients for appropriate therapies. Indeed, early detection and screening, so important when it comes to this, as well as so many other things in the medical world nowadays. Well, folks, we trust you're now more familiar with prostate cancer treatment options. Dr. Ahmed Patel, a pleasure. Thanks so much again. Thank you, Joey. And for more information, please do visit DooleyHealthAndCare.com. Again, that's DooleyHealthAndCare.com. If you found this podcast helpful, please do share it on your social media. I'm Joey Waller. And thanks again for listening to Duly Noted, a health and care podcast.